<laughs> the spice just hit me. Oh. No mic this morning because we're all packed up and leaving Oaxaca, but first we needed to stop to see Maria de Jesus here at her tamale stand and get some breakfast, but we're packing up and we're hitting the road back to Mexico City. We made it to Mexico City a little bit late yesterday evening and we kind of just chilled out in the hotel, got room service, got some work done, watched a little bit of Netflix, and now we're up early this morning and it's Christmas. So I guess Merry Christmas. And we're heading now across the street to the airport to catch our flight to LA and then we're driving to Phoenix. And I'm so excited to be heading to Phoenix, not only because I get to see my parents on Christmas, not only because I love Phoenix as a base for exploration in the US Southwest, but because I bought myself a Christmas present and it arrives today on Christmas and I'm so excited. Made it to Mexico City Airport and so far our Christmas morning is not like it's not been the perfect Christmas morning. We saw a really, really, really nasty motorcycle accident on the way here. I really hope those guys are okay. And then secondly, as I was trying to pack some things into my bag, I pulled my tripod up and bonked poor Jody right on the head. So Jody's gonna have a little bit of a bump. But things are gonna get better, I hope. We're gonna board this flight to LA and yeah. <laughs> and then and then Merry Christmas will commence. <laughs> Made it to LA and now we're just cruising. We've jumped in a rental car. This is gonna be our rental car for a full month here in the US. And then we're, uh, yeah, I guess we're driving to Phoenix where I get to pick up my Christmas present today. Did I mention I'm excited for that? Okay, made it to Arizona back here in Phoenix and absolutely stoked to be here. I love coming to Arizona, I love coming to Phoenix. It's such a good base of exploration. There's so many cool places to see, so many cool places to shoot. Now, it's super bright, so I'm sorry if my face is like blown out and the exposure is all crazy, but it's just really bright in Phoenix. Now, the other reason I love being in Phoenix is because it's kind of like my hub for getting things. It's really easy to get stuff shipped here on Amazon or whatever. And so it ends up being like this place that I come every year and replace gear and buy new gear. Last year, for example, last year when I came here, I got the Phantom 4. I also got a new GoPro. I think I got the gimbal actually last year this time. So every year when I come here, it kind of turns into like, I don't know, it kind of turns into my revitalization of my camera gear and, and stuff like that. So it's super exciting. This is my Christmas gift to myself. I've been talking about this for ages, about getting a new camera body. I've had the 6D that's shooting this video right now for over three years. And basically for two of those years, I've been talking about replacing it. But then the right product has never come around. And I'm gonna explain like why I didn't go to Nikon or why I didn't go to Sony or why I stuck with Canon, as you'll see coming up here. But it basically just came down to me saying, you know what, the right product for me is never gonna come out. I need to upgrade, so let's just upgrade it. So everybody's been saying like, everybody's been assuming that it's gonna be the 6D Mark II since I shoot 6D already. And actually that was the way I was totally heading. And then at the last minute I changed my mind and I am now, about to start shooting on the 5D Mark IV that I literally just got. Haven't even opened the box yet and see what's inside. My parents brought it down for me from Canada. And now, full disclosure, this camera on B&H in the US sells for about 
$3,200. I'm a part of Canon Canada's ambassador program, which doesn't really get me anything, except for when I'm in Canada, I can usually loan products totally for free if I wanna use them in Canada, although I'm never in Canada. And I do get a really good discount on Canon gear. So this retails in the States for $3,200 US dollars. I got it for about $3,700 US dollars. So that's actually, the largest purchase I've ever made. That's the most I've ever spent in one single purchase in my entire life. And by quite a bit. I think actually the second largest purchase I've ever made in my entire life was the 6D that's shooting this with the 16 to 35 millimeter lens. Um, and I, w I was super, super excited about the 6D. When I got that, that was my first full frame. It was my like first somewhat professional camera. Now I'm at the point that I realize that gear's not super important. I'm at the point in my career that if you handed me a Rebel T3i, I think I would still be able to produce really cool stuff. But it is nice, it's gonna be nice having a fresh new camera like this one. And um, yeah, this is kind of exciting, but maybe not as exciting as it was back when I had the 6D. It's obviously bigger. I can see that it's bigger, it feels meatier, and it's a beautiful camera, actually. Um, always liked Canon, how it sits in my hand. I felt Nikons and Sonys and everything else, and they just, they feel different in my hand. I guess it's partly what you're used to. And I, that's one of the reasons I went with the 5D Mark IV. But the 5D Mark IV has obviously, it has great low light handling. It's got nice autofocus system and it, it's not perfect. Now I wanna talk quickly about why 5D Mark IV versus 6D Mark II versus Nikon 850 versus Sony A7 Mark III because all those other cameras have really good reasons that I should have been shooting them and maybe not the best reasons why I went with the 5D Mark IV. But I wanna to talk to you guys quickly about the decision because it has been a whole year, even two years in the making. Since rumors about the 6D Mark II came out, I was telling everybody that's my next camera. I was telling everybody, definitely when it comes out, I'm going to get it. And then it came out and it basically had everything I need. There's things that it's lacking that other people were concerned about, but it had everything I needed and I was really, really stoked about it. And as usual, I always wait about a month or two months to hear the real reviews about it. And when it came out that the dynamic range wasn't super strong on it, it, it didn't affect me like it did everybody else. Everybody else was freaking out about it and I could have cared less to be honest, and then the more I thought about it, and the more I thought about my style of shooting, and the more I thought about how much it was gonna affect my work, the more I decided that if I'm a professional, I need the best camera possible for my style. Just like if I was a welder, I can probably get by using you know, an old welder, but it would definitely make my work better if I had the best welder available. So I thought about that a lot and I just decided that I couldn't go with the 6D Mark II. There was just that one little thing that was kind of dogging it. And part of me actually, the competitor in me, kind of wanted to buy it and just to prove to everybody that it doesn't matter, that something minute like the dynamic range isn't something that has to hold you back, that there's ways around it. And then again, I thought about it, this is my job. I kind of want the absolute best product I can use. And actually in my mind, the best product at the time wasn't the Canon. The best product at the time is the Nikon D850, which I think is just a phenomenal camera. And I think it's absolutely perfect, but it would just be really, really expensive for me to change over. I'd need to change all my lenses. I'd need to sell all my stuff. And it, it would have just been absolutely like a very expensive, way too expensive for me. It probably would end up costing me like five or $6,000 to switch over to Nikon, just for potentially in the future switching to Sony. Which brings me to the Sony. Why didn't I go with the Sony A7 Mark III? And again, it just came down to cost. I could buy the Sony A7 Mark III and then use Metabones adapters for my Canon lenses and all sorts of things and eventually switch over to Sony lenses. And there was just a part of me that was like, I'm not ready to do that. And I think that there's a time I'll be ready to do that in about a year or maybe two years, at which point maybe I'll be ready to move on from this. So in many ways, like, like the 5D Mark IV for me was kind of like, almost like a stopgap in between the switch to Sony or potentially, and this is the real dream, the real dream, my real hope 
is that this doesn't become a stopgap. It's that Canon comes out with something comparable to the A7 Mark III, something mirrorless, something a little bit smaller, something with just an epic sensor, fantastic dynamic range, something that shoots in that level. That's what I want. And so, in my opinion, this is me being a loyal customer to Canon. This is me saying, Canon, I've just spent $2,700 on your product. You've got two years now to come up with a product that's comparable to the Sony gear, and then I'll stick with you guys. So, Canon, I hope you're listening to that. Sony, keep up the good work. Keep pushing the industry, love it. Nikon, keep pushing the industry. The D850 is a great camera. And uh, I am looking forward to this. Even if it seems like it's definitely the worst of the three between the D850, the Sony A7 Mark III and this, I'm still definitely looking forward to putting this to work. And I'm looking forward to having the dials. The dials on my current camera are gone. I'm looking forward to all the pieces being intact, which are all falling off of my 6D uh, Mark I. And yeah, I'm just looking forward to having a new camera. My Christmas gift to myself. Now, that's it for today. It's been a bit of a, a bit of a chattery episode, but I kind of wanted to bring you guys through my thought process and let you know why I went with the 5D Mark IV instead of the 6D Mark II, the Sony A7 Mark III, and the Nikon D850. And I guess the answer is there's no good reason other than the fact that I wanted to keep all my Canon lenses and not have to buy new Canon gear. So I'll be putting this to the test over the next um, couple episodes. I don't, you know, do that many gear reviews anymore. And there's a billion gear reviews out on this camera. But I will be taking you through on vlog episodes and talking about my experience with this camera, how I feel about it, how, I, how, how it's working out for me, and of course sharing the images as we go along. So lots of fun stuff coming from here in the US Southwest. We're six weeks in the US. Lots of landscapes, lots of cool locations, and uh, lots of photography. There's also going to be some more gear, I think and some new gear coming here to Phoenix over the next little while. So I'll integrate that as well, and I hope to see you guys next time. Merry Christmas. Peace.